Bridge sent me their 12.9 Max Plus keyboard a little over a week ago, and I have been using it every day since then. If you have never heard of Bridge before, they make some really nice keyboards for the iPad and Surface, as well as other accessories. I do want to point out that I did not receive a USB Type-C cable with my package, but the retail versions will. Last I checked, the Bridge 12.9 Max Plus keyboards will begin shipping on the week of June 28th for pre-orders, and all new orders after that will ship out sometime in mid-July. So anyways, what makes this keyboard so special? Let's explore the features and why I decided to replace my Apple Magic Keyboard with it. For starters, I love the aluminum design and the way it feels in your hands. As soon as you pick it up, you'll notice it's a premium product right away. The iPad attaches to the magnetic snap fit case with ease, and the hinges are very strong and holds its position well. We will check that out some more later on in the video, but let's connect the keyboard to the iPad first. A single tap on the power button turns on the keyboard, and then you hold the Bluetooth key down for a few seconds to enter pairing mode. After that, you would just connect the keyboard to your iPad via Bluetooth, just as you would with any other devices. Within a couple of seconds, we are now paired up and ready to go. To stay up to date with the latest firmwares and assure that the keyboard is working properly, you need to download the Bridge Connect app. My keyboard is already running the latest firmware, so I won't be updating it. The iPad Pro is my main device when I'm at home. It's very portable and I enjoy using iPad OS to browse the web, check emails, shop on Amazon, as well as edit photos and videos. The keyboard is available in three different colors, space gray, silver, and white. The limited edition white comes with a white case and a silver keyboard. The first thing you may notice is the large, oversized trackpad. It definitely feels very similar to the trackpads you would find on a MacBook Pro, and it does indeed support multi-touch and gestures. As you can see, I am using the trackpad very fast, and it was able to keep up without any delays. The trackpad is nearly twice the size of the one from the Magic Keyboard. One of my favorite things about this keyboard are the extra function keys that were not available on the Magic Keyboard. The function keys on the top row includes a lock screen shortcut, a toggle between three different levels of backlight, adjusting the display's brightness, multimedia keys to adjust volume, play, stop, and so forth. The keyboard has a built-in battery that can be charged via USB Type-C. The battery can last up to 3 months at 2 hours per day without the backlight, or up to 40 hours with the backlight on. You can check the battery life by using the iPad OS widget, and since the bridge keyboard does not draw power from the iPad, the iPad has a longer battery life. Due to the firm hinges, opening and closing the iPad works best while using both hands. The movement feels very solid and the edges all lined up perfectly when closed. When the iPad is fully open, the keyboard does slightly tilt up, improving the ergonomics. Along each side of the case, there are two tabs to help assist with opening and closing, as well as removing the iPad. You can see how strong the hinges are here, and the full range of motion which provides a variety of comfortable viewing angles. When I tap on the screen, there is a small vibration, but nothing that would concern me or affect the way I use it. And the base is pretty heavy, so you don't have to worry about the iPad tipping over. One thing that I thought was pretty neat that was not listed on Bridges' website is that I can use the iPad in portrait mode. It was probably not designed to be used this way, but I've tried it and it works fine. I forgot to mention that the case is made out of a hard plastic, and the magnets are very strong. Once you attach the iPad, you don't have to worry about it slipping off. I have used other magnetic cases before with weaker magnets, and it would give me anxiety when I carry my iPad around. Oh, and by the way, if you're using the iPad in portrait mode, the magnets don't work. I'm just using the back case as a stand basically. When compared to the Magic Keyboard, I prefer the typing experience on the Bridge Keyboard. I notice that I'm able to type faster and more accurately. The Bridge keycaps are also better spaced, and if you enjoy typing on the MacBook Pro, you will definitely like using this one for sure. Here's a look at both keyboards side by side. The Magic Keyboard is definitely much slimmer, but the Bridge Keyboard has a larger palm rest surface. And when you look at the size of the trackpads, the Bridge trackpad is nearly twice the size. It's actually slightly bigger than the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro as well. One downside to the Bridge Keyboard is that it's pretty heavy, weighing in at about 2.1 pounds. With the iPad Pro mounted, the weight could be a deal breaker for some, but for me, I don't mind it. And it's actually a bit thicker than the MacBook Pro as well. I did notice that the keyboard has a slight purplish hue to it, so it doesn't match my space gray iPad perfectly, but it could just be the one that I personally received. If it's one thing that the Magic Keyboard has that others do not, it's the floating design. This feature is definitely unique and gives it the cool factor. I have owned the Magic Keyboard since the first day it was released, and it rarely leaves the house, but due to the material it's made out of, its age is slowly showing. 
And while I still think the Magic Keyboard is a great accessory for the iPad, I am loving the Bridge Keyboard and have switched to it permanently. And best of all, the price is $100 cheaper, costing $249.99. So if you were to choose between the two, which one would you buy? I would love to hear your thoughts, so drop me a comment below. And until next time, thank you for watching. Thank you.